with Dr. Richard Barwell. This is Baron with One Chiropractic. And, and we're starting to wrap this series down. We have this session and one more session with Dr. Barwell, and that's going to wrap up our, our first neurologically based chiropractic series. And I have a feeling, Doc, just because we couldn't get everybody in, you know, Patrick Porter, we could, Heidi was just traveling like crazy and I couldn't get her in. So we're going to have to do a, a you know, a 2.0, if you will, on this series and, and get some of these other people and some of the, you know, adjust their technique masters, as you stated earlier, and we'll continue to, you know, bring people into this conversation because we're not done. I think we're just starting on this wave. So those of you that have loved this and you've made it this far, just know that we're going to take a little bit of a break. We're going to give you time to let this stuff marinate a little bit, and then we're going to come back at you with more stuff um, as we add more people to the conversation. But so today we're, we're actually going to kind of go where we started, right? And we want to revisit some of the definitions and the terms and the ideals that we started with to kind of wrap this thing back up together. So go ahead and lead us into that, Doc. Super. Uh, this is uh, to show some of the overreaching effects. And we need to take a look at chiropractic um, from the neurologically based chiropractic in its components along the way. Look at the adjustment. Look at what you we know, can imagine looking at a definition of an adjustment. I mean, we needed to have this. This has been one of the battles from chiropractic from day one. And so putting all those kind of definitions together from a neurologically based chiropractic starts to really make sense. And listen, I hope that people go back and start over again and watch because I can guarantee you, uh, I go and I do a, a, a presentation, a 12 hour presentation around the world. I do 10 hours or eight hours on neurologically based chiropractic. And I've been invited back more than once. And I do the same program coming back. Right. And we've had people come to the training programs we put on and come three and four times. And they'll say, you didn't say that last time. It's the same slide. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly the same slide. The difference was you had moved in a point of evolution and, and thinking that you all of a sudden were able to put that into perspective with what went before. So go back over them. Play them again and again and again and again. It, it, you'll get more and more out of it. I know the people you've had on here, and, and boy, I'll tell you, we're limited to what we can bring to the table within these things. So let me start with this. I'm going back to this. <clears throat> he who seeks truth and factual process progress for the development of mankind is a breaking plow. He denies and ignores stagnant customs and traditions. To ding. Mm -hmm. His task is to liberate man's mind and body from the limitations of old principles by introducing new principles with greater possibility. BJ said this, the people that are fighting this whole thing of saying I'm a principal chiropractor, are principal chiropractors stuck on an old principle that has been proven to be challenged. Yep. That there's something bigger that went on in this thing that they didn't understand at that time. He had an idea. He figured out that there was more to it than what, what most people thought. You know, it wasn't about punching a bone in the back. So you can have a vertebral misalignment and not have neurological interference. There are secondary and tertiary. So he, he got the, the big idea on this thing. But we need to take this to heart. So here's what it is. What is neurologically based chiropractic? I've had people say, well, of course it's neurologically based. I'm a neurological based chiropractor. I take pressure off of the nerve. I'm a neurological based. The problem is that theory is not supported. Right. And as long as we continue to push a non-supported theory, it's called dogma. And that's where we keep running into problem. And it wasn't medicine's responsibility to prove chiropractic. It was chiropractic's responsibility to prove chiropractic. If it wasn't bone on nerve, but it still got results, we were missing what was really going on. Yep. And it was our responsibility to do this. So neurologically based chiropractic is a research supported approach in which the central nervous system is the primary focus of chiropractic care. You know, that doesn't change anything. It just moved it upstairs. Right. On all challenges in spinal mechanics, I love this part, all challenge, challenges in spinal mechanics. So if you're strictly mechanically based, that's okay. You get results. But guess what? You're dealing with a tertiary response, not a primary. Right. Spinal mechanics, joint play, vertebral fixations, vertebral subluxations, vertebral subluxation complex responses are secondary or tertiary in nature. And once you recognize that that's it, then why not want to work with what the actual cause was? Right. And the cause was the effect of stress on the central nervous system, building patterns that were less than ideal. Beautiful. Okay. 
Anything you want to discuss on that? No, I, I mean, that sums it up. I mean, we're, we're just reminding people again. But yeah, I, I think we've, we've, we've proven that existence through this series, but I love it. And here's the NBC definition, and these are that we came up with, and I say we, because I worked with a group of incredible chiropractors over the last 20, 25 years that followed what I was doing and stayed stuck in the, in the groove and helped develop a lot of this stuff. It wasn't just me. There's a whole group of people out there that, from around the world, that got the idea. We, we worked together to come up with this stuff. But here's, here's it. Chiropractic is the art, science, and philosophy. I'm not surrendering any of those three. Right. I mean, you have to have all three of those. You have to have the art of chiropractic because that's where the rubber meets the road. Right. That's how we get the most effectiveness out of our care. We have to have science that's going to support the philosophy. And the philosophy is critical because it differentiates us from the practice of medicine. You cannot have chiropractic without those three. So I'm not committing sacrilege here by supposing by suggesting that there's something different in chiropractic than, than just verbal subluxation based. But it's the art, science, and philosophy of locating and facilitating the reduction of interference to the innate expression of the neural-based allostatic responses of the body. To me, that sums up chiropractic. Yep. Yeah, it's not, it's not uh, homeostatic because it's an adaptive mechanism. Right. And it's really important that we have an, the, the highest level of innate expression that we can possibly have. And, of course, that innate expression is carried via the nervous system. You know, you what, I, what I love about that definition is it's not using any of the buzzwords that people start getting all, you know, the hair on and over. We're, but, but it's all scientifically based and factual. So I love it. And you know what? It, as science evolves, we have to evolve with it. And you know, I'm sort of like handling the tor handing the torch here. I was handed a torch, and I took it seriously to say it, it was my responsibility to advance this profession, which didn't mean leave it dead, stagnant. What it meant to make changes to improve it. And I'm handing the torch over to the next generation to say, hey, if you find there's something even better than what I'm talking about here, then it's your responsibility to develop it. Right. Okay. Subluxation. Oh boy. There, the CCP guideline organization came into play when the Mercy documents came out to try to limit chiropractic uh, to basically signs and symptoms and physical therapy. Uh, and Terry Romberg, uh, bless him, um, he came up and he formed this organization, a worldwide organization, uh, in, about uh, guidelines for chiropractic practice. And he had some of the, the best brains around in the, in the profession working on it. Um, Ralph Boone, um, uh, several of the other researchers were involved in, in forming it. And they did immense amount of Chris Kent did a huge amount of work on putting this together. And it's a beautiful piece of work. And I was on this board. It ran for years. And I was uh, vice president of it for about five years. Uh, we had a worldwide organization. What happened was it, the... Trump era cut off the, the funding to these guideline groups that were setting up. It wasn't just for us. This was a guideline house where you you registered it. You had to meet certain criteria. You had to, to have uh, updates every five years. And we did it with this thing. But it cut it and they, they had to fold. So we've lost the guideline group. But the guidelines are still in play. And they're there for people. You can go to, to ccpguidelines.org and download them free. And you really should take a look at it because things like uh, EEG and neurofeedback and biofeedback were included in at the role of chiropractic years ago. Hmm. And we don't know about it. Well, when I was on that board, we, we took a look at the vertebral subluxation and bone on nerve with what was going on. And after a two year battle, and I'm talking about a battle. Well, I can only imagine. Yep, we got to change the definition. And the definition of subluxation is compromised neural integrity, basically. And here's how it works. Subluxation is a neurological imbalance or distortion in the body. Bing. It's not vertebral. It's not mechanical. It's neurological. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or distortion in the body associated with adverse physiological responses and or structural changes. You can have neurological imbalance before before you see it as a structural change. So if you're waiting for a structural change, it's already too late. 
okay, which may become persistent and progressive. The most frequent site for the chiropractic correction of subluxation is via the vertebral column. The, the, the issue and the challenge that comes in here is the use of the term subluxation. And because of the historical event of that word within the profession, we left the term subluxation in there. To, to me, um, when I'm talking about the spine, I, I really use the term fixation uh, as, as a, uh, what's going on as an area for us to look at. Right. But there it is. There is subluxation from a neurological standpoint, and that's in the CCP guidelines as of 2013. That's great. And I, and I Every association that signed the CP, CCP guidelines when the Mercy documents came out, and you take a look, and you go in their history, and you'll find that virtually every association in the United States and Canada signed the, the, the guidelines. They accepted the guidelines for their area. They've forgotten about it. If people don't even know about CCP. Right, right. You know, but it's there. Okay? Yep, good. At the adjustment. What the heck is a chiropractic adjustment? A chiropractic procedure. It's not a manipulation. It's much more specific than that because it's specifically aligned with the neurological needs of the patient. And one of the cool things about the neuroinfinity is you hook somebody up live time and you do your adjustment, even when you're taking the, your positioning on it, you'll start to see the changes. And if your positioning is wrong, if the, the uh, nervous system will start to respond negatively. If the positioning is right, if, before you do anything, it will start to move in the right direction. That's how sensitive this is. Yeah. So a chiropractic procedure whereby the consequence of an action, the adjustment, serves to continually modify further action within the nervous system with the intent of improving the innate expression and therefore of creating harmony within the body systems. I love it. To me, that's exactly what I wanted to accomplish with every adjustment I ever gave. You know, and, and I see as you're reading these definitions, I'm like, these are things that should be on the walls in clinics. Like, I mean, so people understand when you use these terms and your patients are walking in there, they understand what you mean by the term. I, I love it. Yep. It, it, it's so important that people get this. Yeah. So that's where I was going to end with that. Awesome. I'll, I'll leave that there. Yeah. So, so that's sort of what we wrapped up. And if people have these, this in mind of what we're trying to accomplish and, and why we're doing this, um, and understand that the neuroinfinity just fit in as, as the tool to be able to prove this stuff. But what's more important is you get your mindset right. That's right. You know, that's where it has to come from. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's what, again, to reiterate, as we're going through this series and, and we're wrapping it up, we just want people to start changing the way they view what they're doing. And, and right, it started in the very beginning with their intent. Like, why are you doing the things you're doing and changing that paradigm? And I think these definitions help to ferment that. And it changes your vocabulary, which is ultimately going to change the way you interact with the people around you. So I love it, Doc. Absolutely love it. Thank you again for sharing this amazing information. We've got one more session with Dr. Barwell. Um, and then, uh, you know, we're going to wrap this series up. So we love you guys. We appreciate you. We hope, you know, as he stated earlier in this session, go back and rewatch these things. You know, those videos are going to be up forever. So we want people to be, to gain that information, to go back and look at slides, grab information like these definitions that we gave you here today, put them on your walls, put them on your flyers, your pamphlets, whatever it is you use to communicate with the people in your world. But uh, we love and appreciate you. Have an incredible day and go change some lives. God bless.